Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Davis. And Benjamin Halden. So in today's episode, we have the amazing Stoltman brothers on the Not So Fit Couple podcast in the form of Tom Stoltman, who is two times world's strongest man and Britain's strongest man. And then we also have Luke Stoltman, who is five times winner of the Scotland's Strongest Man and 2021 Europe's Strongest Man Champion. In today's episode, we talk about toxic masculinity, quality in sport, mental health, and an in-depth chat about how it took its time and scrutiny for Tom to be diagnosed with autism and the effects that it had on him. And the full episode is fueled by helium and a few laughs along the way. Please make sure to continue to share and to recommend the podcast to others and leave reviews and enjoy this week's episode, which is kindly sponsored by the amazing Athletic Greens. Tom, Luke, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. For Absolute us. pleasure. Did you say I got your uh, your names right there? The correct intro today. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We don't need we don't need to repeat and share <laughs> yeah. the horribleness that happened. Actually, happens quite a lot that people mistake Tom. Really? Yeah. Do you they? just walk past them in the street when they say their own names, mm. don't you? But a lot of people, or well, they come up to us and say to me, Luke, they say, "Oh, Tom, I'm your biggest fan." I'm like, "No way." <laughs> what What do you do when that happens, though? I'm like, well, you can't because I'm Luke. So, yeah. like, and they ask for a photo. I'm like, no, you're not getting a photo, you idiot, um, because I'm not Tom. And, um, but then you get a photo after whatever. Yeah. Um, I take it as a, a compliment. Tom's ten years younger, and he's two there times world strong. When as I well. get it, I take it as a, <laughs> <laughs> a complete insult. Yeah. Tom crashes a guy's skull when he gets called Luke. It's horrible. Poor fucking. That was one of the, that was one of the things I was going to ask you today. Is what is a rivalry like between you two? Because obviously with training and a lot of stuff that you do, you're always bouncing off each other, but what's the rivalry and how does that help you guys sometimes? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we're brothers in everything we do, but, you know, come to strongman, we want to beat each other, but I think, you know, we vibe off each other when we're competing. We kind of get into people's heads as well. A lot of the athletes, obviously, they go to these competitions by themselves, but me and Luke have got each other. So... It's a big friendly rivalry we have, you know, when, we, when Luke's out competing, doing a log press, whatever it is, we're, I'm shouting from the sidelines, same with him. If we're up against each other, you know, we want to win, but we have a laugh and carry on afterwards. Uh, and, you know, if it, when I win World's Strongest Man, he's there, he's the happiest guy, yeah. vice versa, when he won Europe's last year. As long as the trophies stay with the Stoltmans, you know, it doesn't matter who wins. And, yeah, rivalry, I think, is very healthy right now as well. So mm-hmm. yeah. even, even in training, I mean, we were training yesterday at an event session, so... Like Tom shouting for me when I'm going for my heavy lift, mm-hmm. I'm screaming for Tom, and then when we we both hit our lifts, we're like buzzing, oh, that was a good session, yeah. and then we move on. So the the rivalry is there, you know, but it's more of an encouragement when we're training. It's when it comes to world strongest man, for example, you know, we're individual athletes. Then we're trying to beat each other as well as every other athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a lot of work we've done actually with a psychologist. Is trying to really yeah split that mindset because before I was maybe. And probably we're both guilty of it, to be honest. We're both putting too much energy mm. and supporting su- supporting each other. Um, so my voice, I would lose my voice after day one at World's Strongest Man, shouting for Tom and not really concentrating on myself. And then Tom would be supporting me. And, you know, it was just a little bit, um, it wasn't as optimal as it should be mm. as, a, as an individual athlete. It was so. even with interviews as well. You know, a lot of people would ask, mm. well, how's Luke's training or... How's Luke doing it? It's like, well, that's for Luke to answer, not me. Yeah, so yeah. people are still calling it, trying to confer to us as like the Stoltman brothers, not individual athletes, mm. until we told them, right, you have to ask questions about Address, me, yeah. mm. ask yeah. questions about Luke, and then that's when it started as well. You know, yeah, getting better, so. yeah. One of the really cool things that I, I've only actually just seen recently, because I think it was one of, on one of your videos, I don't know if you've seen it yet, is your tattoo. Of Tom. It's so cool. That that was when you ran on after... Yeah, that was last year, 2021, oh, yeah. straight yeah, after yeah, I won. So that yeah. was the first moment we shared together. So. Oh, it's so, it's such that a nice amazing. Tattoo, that. So that was, that was uh, very well done as well. Isn't it it's is great. well done. Yeah, our boy Gordon from Livingston, he does our tattoos. So he came up and he did that piece for us. Um, so yeah, that moment wow. when Tom won his first title, it was, it was so, so special. Obviously it was the first one, but the way it happened, there was a point difference between Tom and Brian Shaw going into the yeah. stones. Brian Shaw is one of the greatest strong men that we've ever had. Um, and for Tom to... I was absolutely <laughs> crapping myself. Yeah. Cause, uh, it was good because Luke had just went before me. Brian had his guys kind of psyching himself up. And I was by myself in the room kind of like going over things, you know, it's like, geez, Brian, Brian. And then he came in just going absolute mental at me, <laughs> slapping me. I was like, 
right, let's get it on now, you know, and as soon as I heard his voice, that's when we were like, let's turn it on, so wasn't it, and then, yeah, yeah did it, and then, yeah, wet fell to my knees, and he's got the tattoo. Yes, and he captured that photo, and they did yeah, it. it was so unbelievable. It's, it's when wild. I watched it, I literally had hairs just fucking standing up on my arm, wasn't it, it was great. <laughs> it was wild. What, what did your dad say about that? Yeah, he's, he's, he was actually, I think he was in Shetland at the time, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was on a fishing trip. Was um, he? Um, and he was, I think he was a bottle of whiskey down. <laughs> uh, a bottle of whiskey, Jesus. And uh, he just in tears. Dad, like, I'm I'm quite similar to Dad in the way I'm very emotional. You know, yeah. I'm quite an emotional guy and Dad's very emotional. So he was just absolutely buzzing, just so happy. You know what, yeah, to have, so proud. You know, imagine having, I mean, okay, both sons, you know, competing in the final world, strongest yeah. man, doing really well. And then to see Tom winning World's Strongest Man, fucking hell, man, it's wild. It's like... It gives me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You know, imagine seeing your son's the strongest man in the world. That's He laps it up every day as well. Right? He, does, yeah. <laughs> he, he gets like, loads of free stuff. Never, he's, just, <laughs> he, uh, he's, he's usually in the garden in the house, but he's more at the shops these days now, just, oh, you're the old man. You're the, you're Chatting up all the old wives yeah. now, that's what he's doing. He loves it. Man. So he he loves he, it. He's getting the endorsement deals off the back of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so, yeah. No, he's he's uh, he, well, he's the reason, I guess, why we'll you know we're yeah. here as well. So hopefully he can have some enjoyment and in, uh, in our success, which is awesome. Yeah, so yeah, speaking amazing. speaking of rivalry, we usually start the podcast with a joke. So I thought today we would do. You guys have got three little cards there. Yeah, yep. I haven't seen these yet either. Right. So the name of the game is there's going to be like a point system on the screen. Okay. So there'll be Stoltman's versus not so fit couple. Right. And you've got to try and keep a straight face as possible. Oh, so. God's sakes. We'll do, you, you do rock, paper, scissors with Luke to see who, see who goes first. So and we'll tell a joke we'll each. One, two, three, and then show. And then go. Come on then, Luke. Ready? Come on. Right. One, two, three. Oh. One, two, three. Oh, oh my God. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think you were going to go for that. <laughs> that was so Don't annoying. fuck this up, right? All right. So, so we, we have... can't laugh. So we can't laugh. So I've, all right, if I laugh, no? You, get, you guys are all right. <laughs> no, you two are on a team. Okay, Just we can't laugh. So it's... Sure, sure. Right, really. This is really funny. Uh, um, why? Who wrote this, by the way? Cal. The guy who works on all the Great, great handwriting. <laughs> Amazing. Um, you ready? Ready? Right, okay. Why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? Hey. He got stuck in a crack. <laughs> I'm better than you. That's, that, that's a proper dad joke. Yeah, that's a, they fuck me up. I'm better than you. See, Cal knew. Cal's trying to support me here because Cal loves me. Right. And he's thinking, try not make Lucy okay. laugh. I'll do the first one then. Ready? Are, you, are yours on the screen? Yeah. Right, okay. Come on. Game Ready? Big face. Game face on. Yeah, they're going to win. Ready? Mm. Why don't witches wear underwear? Why? So they can get a better grip on their broom. I fucking got Oh, myself. look. I'm not letting him down. That's my fame. He smashed that. How did you not laugh? That's okay. One, one nil to you guys. Oh, How many do we have that. each? Three? I was yeah. close there. Was <laughs> it's the facial expressions of all I can't look in the eye. That's what it means. <laughs> no, you, right, you, yeah. you read it, big guy. Right. Ready. Why did the man fall in the well? Why did he fall in the well? He could not see that well. <laughs> Good, that, that is funny. That is really funny. This one's more funny than that. That's really funny, that one. Carl's <laughs> so good at joke writing. Yeah, is. Ben, this isn't funny. Number two. Oh, for God's sake. Okay. Why did Mickey break up with Minnie? I don't know. Because she's fucking goofy. <laughs> Disney one. That's really good. <laughs> and you didn't want to get him. Oh. It's the fact that you swore as well. I think it's like a, yeah. I thought it was going to like be like a. Like, that was like that's like a series first. Like you swore, <laughs> and because I made you do it as well. Oh, well, last good. one. Huh? Let's win this one. We doing one more. Right. Who's 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 do you guys now? We're winning two one. Yeah. Oh. All right. Let's just get it serious. Right. This is where the rivalry is. Oh, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, that doesn't often a good start, is it? No. <laughs> oh. Okay. What is E.T. short for? I don't know. What is E.T. short for? Because he's got little legs. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking lost it now, aren't you? <laughs> 
That is a funny one. I want, I want to keep well that. Done, right. I want to keep that one. That's Cal. unique. Isn't it? Cal, we're using those jokes. Cal, they're really good. Very <laughs> last one. Oh, God. We, need to, we need to salvage some dignity. Oh, yeah. We can't. We've already lost. Yeah, we need to salvage oh, some right, dignity. I'm afraid. Yeah, get some yeah. Yeah. Back. Yeah, come on. So this is a little bit of a longer one. A family are driving behind a bin wagon and all of a sudden a huge dildo flies. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they hear that name. <laughs> Do we, do we get one point for that? It's all the way through. <laughs> really. A huge dildo flies off the back and lands on the windshield. The mother, to save her son's innocence, says, Wow, that was a big bug. The kid turns to his dad and says, Jeez, how does a bug fly with a cock that big? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's the funny. best one, yeah. Oh, Jesus. That's funny. Oh, God. That's triple yeah. points, that. They make me sweat, man. Jeez. Oh, so stupid. Oh, that's a good funny. Oh, wow. Where'd you get these good jokes? jokes? Oh, it's <laughs> funny. So we're off TikTok, wait. I was sitting there this morning crying. That's all it is. so stupid. You never let me pick the jokes because I don't go for rude jokes. I go for like little humour, but you knew they wouldn't work today. That's class. That's so funny. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh God! I just yeah, gone at the dildo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, who went at dildo? Was <laughs> that? <laughs> I knew something was happening when I happened. So the other things in terms in terms of rivalry, we uh, I think Matt's probably like no, there's a few people who've done it. Matt, I think, is top of the scoreboard for our strength grip test. I think I think to be honest, if you don't win this. Jesus, no you may as well not have your world's strongest man title if you can't beat. Watch match grip. Up. So I think Matt got like. Did you get like ninety? No, sixty. No, Matt was really quite high. No, honestly, that's Matt. Mine was uh, forty. Uh, <laughs> Strong grip, forty. No, I think Matt Matt was like ninety or seventy nine. What have you done these before? Do you, do you think that's quite think strong? We've done them before, haven't we? I'm sure we did I've done it once. I don't. I, with a, I, yeah, I, I, think, I did those things with the captain Crazy crashers. Yeah. No, I'm sure the physio. I'm sure a physio took them up one time. Who wants to go first? Luke can go first. first. Right. So, so you've got sixty to beat. That's sixty. That's it's already got. on eight point two. I know because I've just squeezed it. That's not my thing. By Will the it, way, do we pre try press set? No, no. Just hold it again. And then I'll change what. You might have to press start again. Yeah. And on again. Oh right. Okay. Age. So Ben, you just got eight there. That was you. Oh, shall I, shall I just? I think it's <laughs> no, sixty point one on over. My, no. my neck okay. was always cracked. Sixty point one. So on Luke's that. Luke's up on the right. the strength test. Right. Let's go. Luke. Come on. Sixty to beat. I think it might break. Come on. Go. go. <sighs> Eighty-two point three. Fuck me. Okay, so Matt okay. did definitely Luke's, get sixty. Luke's gone straight to the top. Yeah, Matt got sixty. But as well. I'll show you the video. Matt literally fucking put the thing into the sofa and just like put yeah. it on. Yeah, yeah. Sounds Matt, Matt, yeah. How do we get that back I'll, to zero? I'll, I'll, I'll reset it again. We'll re-collaborate. I'm not even going to join in today so, because that is just... Make, make sure that one's click. Does man, man clicks like Matt's, that's ready. That was just Whoa. a warm-up, by the way. That was a warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tom. Go, 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 go. 34.3! <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, go about no. <laughs> Right, start again. Do it again. Do it again. I squeezed it. He got error. Wow, that was too much, Tom. Maybe no, maybe you squeezed too strong that you. Let's try again. Let's try right hand then. Yeah, maybe it was the hand. Take two. Oh yes. What did he get? Eighty-six point nine. Wow. Yeah, it's broken. It was broken the first time. Maybe maybe mine was broken the first time. My left side is my strong hand, and my right side is the one that always gets. Better, so yeah. you, you have to ring Matt now and tell him. You got, you got, yeah. you got, you got, you got two attempts. Matt, I beat you. <laughs> that is wildly impressive. Just said error. Oh, oh whatever. Too strong. Yeah. How's I it mean, on? both of your, you're both. I mean, it's unfair for everyone else now. Whoever does yeah. that, because no, no way in hell they're gonna beat you. If you beat me, I'll give you my golden trophy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's on record, by the way. Matt will be coming back in. <laughs> he won't go home. He'll just be it, training yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know what he's like? He'll yeah. fucking non stop. <laughs> have like just a massive forearm. Yeah. Arm wrestle, guys. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, we were speaking before. You were mentioning about it taking a little bit of time out this year mm. uh, from obviously having quite a heavy 
competitive yeah mm. what will kind of the next few months or year look like for you guys then yeah i mean for me obviously in august we got shaw classic um i said yes to that one that's the first year i get to go to it you know the last two years i've missed it so that'll be good fun colorado shaw's going to put on an awesome show so that's going to be for me in august and then i've got glasgow giants live as well but between that it's just you know having some fun going on holiday and traveling you know i've been mm. with sinead my wife for 10 years and not been on one holiday with her that's not to do with straw man so it'd be nice to actually oh. get away go to a beach and have some drinks and just chill so yeah it's just live my life a wee bit you know and just enjoy my life and have some fun and chill out not have to stress about training yeah. competing and just put that to the back of my mind for a wee while so mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Tom's having fun. I've got to work in the business side. So, <laughs> um, oh, I'll do the business side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that shit as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, only, but in, yeah, a th very similar to Tom. I think we're both competing, I think, four times, four more times oh, yeah. this year. Just some fun, just enjoy the competitions because since we started competing, you know, it's, you know, a lot of, when you do your runs and your swims and everything else that you're training, it's like all consuming. It's all like when I fall asleep, I think about Strongman when I wake up. It's just constantly Strongman, Strongman, Strongman. So, to have this little break where strongman isn't as much of a priority as it has been for the, maybe the last yeah ten years or so, you know, because this has been ten years yeah. plus in the making. Um, looking forward to you know the family holiday we touched on, where the, all the Stoltman crew are all going out to Tenerife. Thirteen of us, that'll be really Jeez. nice. Oh. Thirteen Stoltmans. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I want to see you guys coming into a bar, by the way. Fucking hell. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be good fun. And then, as Tom says, you know, just have some fun. Hopefully, you kids. know, try for yeah, family. Kids. kids is a big thing. I want to say that that's one of the questions that was uh, was on my mind. I'm sure, it's on a lot of people's minds. Mm. You gotta be careful when you're trying for kids in terms of positions that you are <laughs> able to do, <laughs> being the size that you are. You don't know how flexible I am, boy. <laughs> don't you worry. That's Show just, me later, Tom. We've completed the Karma Sutra. Don't worry. So. <laughs> that's why we have our mobility coach every Wednesday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we've got to be very careful yeah. yeah don't want to put a back out or a yeah. wife's back out yeah um touch wood has not happened yet yeah <laughs> so yeah it's uh position wise yeah we're limited to yeah i tried not to do too much yeah i'm just lie on my back and that's it yeah. <laughs> that's the truth, you know? to be fair i don't I think that matters what size you are because that's the position yeah, I that's all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's nice being you know a woman's Boy, goal is to probably please the male yeah and i think that's the the key to a healthy relationship yeah i agree i agree, so, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah it's uh that's probably what's the matter with society today that's I definitely <laughs> say that is, yeah. <laughs> need to be more male logs in relationships <laughs> <laughs> male logs uh, wow that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> but we uh we were speaking the other day weren't we tom as well about i know you're a big disney fan as well aren't you we've just been away haven't we to disney yeah, I think as well, like what you were saying there, taking time out, like a big thing for me, I suffer quite badly with anxiety mm. and all I've been thinking about for seven months is running. Right. I, so I can't, I'm, I'm running. I can't, I'm running. So it's been very overpowering and I'm on, I own a lot of the time mm. on these four or five hour runs mm. and I didn't think doing running would probably make my anxiety worse and it actually has, which is quite unfortunate because I'm on my own so much. So have you suffered with anything like that before in terms of mental health and mm. pressures of constantly constantly just having to be on it all the time yeah i mean obviously you know i've opened up about autism and some of autism you know loneliness is a very very bad thing you know you want all yeah all the time you want people around you and strongman obviously is a very very lonely sport and yeah i suffer especially the world's strongest mantra you know that's 10 to 12 weeks of probably sacrifice everything in your life you know i put Sinead last i put my family last i put everything last and it's the gym and you know there's some nice nights you go to bed like crying because you're like why am i doing this you know and Sinead's crying and she's anxious as well and she's you know her anxiety is playing up because she's lonely and she you don't know what to do so you're kind of like you know for last prep i was nearly every single day going to bed like why am i doing this but then you know you realize you're doing it for the world's strongest man but yeah for me and autism is is very hard because you know, you sometimes you just I'm just uh, in the gym, and I'm you know I'm in a good mood, and all of a sudden I just change, just just like that, you know. But yeah, it's just a weird thing, autism, and yeah, I can especially with strongman, like you said, with running and stuff, it's a very lonely sport, and you could be doing when you're doing these traveling, yeah, you're with your wife and stuff, but 
ninety percent of the time you're in, all you're thinking about is straw man. All you're f wanting to do is straw man, and yeah, it gets gets too much sometimes. And yeah, autism's kind of it's that's my struggle is yeah. trying to mm -hmm. switch off from that. So I love the way that you speak. Well, you spoke about autism. I think you mentioned something about it last weekend when we were at the My Protein mm -hmm. event as well. I think you said you almost saw it like a, a superhero. Superpower, yeah, Super. yeah. I love, love that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Did you find it easier when, I don't know if you call it diagnosed or got the label of autism, because I think I've seen you speak about it before, Luke, mm -hmm. in terms of it was, was it quite difficult in... Yeah, initially getting, like, yeah. Tom, for... Because when Tom initially got diagnosed with autism, it wasn't as um, well-known yeah. or talked about as it is today in today's society. So back then... Um, it would have been more the case that Tom was a uh, more misbehaved, shy, um, didn't like socialising, um, and had these kind of. It wasn't fits. It was like he'd get really emotional. Breakdowns, and yeah, stuff. yeah, a little breakdown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to get, so our mum um, had to really work extremely hard to get Tom a diagnosis because mum knew Tom wasn't a bad child, and he wasn't. He's and he's not. A, he's not got a bad bone in his body. That's the great thing with Tom. Mm -hmm. um, so it took mum a long time. Um, and it was actually, well, don't mind me saying, but it was a film. And mom, yeah, she had to record. Yeah, mum had to record Tom going through one of his, you know, breakdowns mm -hmm. and his like anxiety and all this stuff. And bear in mind, this is when Tom was like, not even in his teenage years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these these people are telling Tom that basically his mum's lying, you know. And it wasn't maybe as 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 blunt as that, yeah. but that's what you could take away from it. Mm -hmm. So imagine being a mother saying, you know, my child's really struggling. And these people aren't believing her, you know. So she's not getting the help for Tom um, that he was was entitled to. You know, it's not because it was a benefit thing or anything like that. You know, both our mum and dad working, dad worked and had a good job. It was just the support that Tom needed in school, and and for Tom to get that um, was yeah, it took a long time. But you know, fa thankfully, you know, through mum and and Tom and the, the family, you know, they got that help and the the, the, the diagnosis eventually came and then then you got the the kind of correct help i guess or support the support that yeah, you needed yeah. um but it's, it's tough though as well because after you get diagnosed with autism and um, we were chatting about this the other day um, else really. yeah there's nothing you get diagnosed with autism and then what do you know what i mean mm. that was gonna be my question like yeah. what, what extra it? help and yeah. support do you get because i know when like i've been through therapy and stuff before mm. um when i was in like a really dark place and that was a godsend for me in, mm. in dealing with stuff because I think especially as as guys and males, we have a whole lot of time to open up about stuff, and that's why I think it's great that you guys speak about it quite a lot because mm -hmm. male suicide rate is so mm -hmm. high at the moment as well, and I think the more people can be open and talk about it, the better, and just breaking down that stigma. A million percent, you know that, that's something that um, again we speak about it on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. You know our our this leave a legacy. You know it's not just a a legacy of being the strongest brothers, world's strongest man. It's actually doing something big mm -hmm. to really um sort of like you know young males taking their lives is absolutely horrendous and i keep saying it you know it's us as a society we're letting people down you know me tom you guys mm -hmm. everyone we're letting people down because it's you know we talk a lot about like masculinity and masculinity gets thrown around a lot at the moment and it's like toxic masculinity mm -hmm. as soon as you say masculinity it seems to be toxic masculinity doesn't have to be toxic you know, for me, my masculinity has allowed me to to do what we do, to be able to, and this doesn't happen, or doesn't have to happen with all couples, but I'm very proud that I can provide for my wife, for my family now. You know, I can do that because of, I would say it's because of my masculinity, you know, and I don't, wouldn't ever stop cushy my wife from doing anything. I'd, lo I'd love that she can, she does her own YouTube, she does beauty, she does all this stuff, very independent. But for me as a, as a man, I feel very proud that I can do that. And it's okay to be masculine. It's okay mm -hmm. to have that that pride in what you do. But it's it's when people, you know, we go through agendas. There's always an agenda that we have to follow. Mm -hmm. And for, for the moment or for the last wee while, it seems to be that this toxic masculinity, we can't be that. We're trying to um, almost de 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 deter um, children or young boys from being like that. And they're almost losing their identity. And I think that's such a, such a, Devastating has such a devastating effect on on the younger generation. You know, I've I'm almost forty. I'm thirty seven, thirty eight in November. You know, and when I was a little boy, I was just out running around, having the time of my life. Didn't care about things. You know, and and now 
the way that, like children are treated in the younger generation, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just something not, we're not doing something right. And that's why so many young males are taking their lives. It's mm. horrendous. In the, in the Highlands, we're Tom and I stay. Bad, yeah. It's every other day. Really? That people are dying. And like the Highlands isn't a big place and it mm. breaks your heart that people, they don't have any other way they've got to take their own lives. And it's, it's horrible. It's, it's, yeah, so that's the, the legacy, you know, it's, um, if we could do something, and that's the great thing with you guys as well, you know, talking about it. So you, Ben, you were saying about going to therapy and stuff. And by talking about stuff, talking about our issues, we've been in dark places. I've gone through hell and back, you know, over the over the years. And it's maybe because my own like self-sabotaging, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I've probably done to myself. And I'm, and by talking about that, hopefully, you know, this, the younger generation uh, won't kind of have to go through that. And they can change, they can actually, you know what, take pride in what they're doing. and have a bit more resilience as well. I think resilience yeah. is quite a big thing at the moment, I think, for a lot of people. That was one of the things that, when I was in therapy, I, was one of the kind of key issues that we looked at was self-sabotage. Mm. Like, I always used to have issues every time anything, or I've had any success in life, was when I almost felt the worst. It was mm. like, explained as, it's like when you take a drug and you're on this high, you mm. need to bring yourself back down again. Mm. And I think a lot of people go through that. I think the other thing as well is what you touched on there is what a lot of pe people think but are afraid to say sometimes about masculinity. Mm, mm. And I think we hear these voices sometimes which is brought forward by a minority and they're often the loudest. So it's like they create this echo chamber mm. that it's not doesn't reciprocate what everyone's thinking. I don't think everyone thinks in that way where like masculinity is toxic, but that's the message that we hear yep. pushed down the throat all the time by these extremists mm -hmm, mm. that the people on the right don't get a, a mm. voice in anything? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, whatever you want to be in life, whatever you choose to be in life, I think that the, the basic fundamentals of of life should be be a good person, you know, be, have manners. You know, yeah. manners are really important, you know, I think. And, um, you know, if you can make someone else's life, I've, I've said this before, if, if you're on your deathbed and you haven't made someone else's life happy or positive, then you've wasted a life, you've wasted an opportunity. So for me, when I'm on my deathbed, I don't sound a bit morbid and stuff, hopefully it won't be for a, a few <laughs> years yet, but if I'm lying there and someone said to me, you haven't really made anyone more positive or happier, then that's a waste of life. Mm -hmm. So I think, I don't know, it's it's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you do see in the news, you do see in um, social media and all these things that are getting pushed. Um, you're right, it's, it's by no means the, the majority but it's the way the media and the way the agendas go, it's like, this is what you've got to believe, this is what we're doing, this is the way the country is, and it's not, you know, the Great Britain, you know, it should be great, you know, mm. that's the thing, you know, we live in Scotland, we're part of the Great Britain, um, we've got great people, great uh, things going on in the country, and I just think that we should just spend more time celebrating the good things and the good things that good people are doing, and, and and just normal people, you know, we're all just normal at the end of the day. We do special things, but at the end of the day, what makes you happy is spending time with loved ones, mm -hmm. training, I don't know, I like seeing the sunrise, etc., etc. It's all very simple, you know, it's all very basic stuff. And, and I think the way the, the society is, it, everything has to be overly complicated. So if we just stop complicating things, maybe we'd all be a little bit happier, I don't know. Yeah. But, what do I know? I'm just a fucking strong man. <laughs> <laughs> There's something similar, and... I, you definitely don't like him. I don't know if you've seen much of Andrew Tate. Oh yeah, he was. I mean, he, talk, he talks a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah I think he's on, class. Some but he talks like some things he says. I'm like, I can't argue with the thing. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about, I think, when I don't know if his nan was on her deathbed or someone like that, and someone was arguing about, well, she never pursued a career or she never really lived a life, and and blah 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 about. Someone was arguing about, um, obviously, female careers. That was the the topic of discussion. And he said, yeah, but on the day that she was in hospital on her de deathbed, she had 70 siblings around her. Sweet. 70 who all loved her to death. And she had created life from the 70 people. And she was at the heart of that family. And she loved the fact that she was able to do that. Mm. So I think it's important sometimes, like let people do what they want to do and be happy doing like the things that they like to do. Yeah, and not everyone is traditional and people like to do different things. Like we're certainly not in a traditional 
Well, like, you like to beat me up all the time, but we'll, we'll leave that because we'll, we'll have domestic violence. No, um, I think our, our job's just not as traditional because we both yeah. work in the same space. And I'm very, I think I grew up in women's sport mm. and we were treated differently to the guys in terms of sport. Mm, mm, mm. So that's my perspective on it because we were paid less. There were just certain things. And I mean, that's not what I think about now. I just want to empower women, mm -hmm. but then I also want to empower guys. So mine's not a one size fits right. all. Mm. I think because I grew up in women's sport from the age of about 10, I've seen it happen. I mean, it might be different in swimming. Mm. I'm not 100% sure. But I think that's where my perspective is, isn't it? It's just a little bit women's mm. sport, guy sport. I want, I want full equality in sport. Hundred yeah. percent equality. That like, you know, when you talk about, uh, so we've got like core values for the mm. for business and stuff. So, yeah. like one of them is equality, and we all a lot of people talk about equality, right? You know, and it's like this should be the same, this should be the same, and and having that that true belief of equality, I think that's what the difference is in today. You know, a lot of people just out this bullshit about equality. Oh, it should be the same here, it should be the same here. A hundred percent, we should be all the same. We should be treated all the same. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, you're a man, or anything in between, it doesn't matter. But we should be celebrated equally. You know, that's the thing. So, like, for example, we've just been speaking to a, a lightweight um, woman, Chloe Brennan, who's an awesome, awesome, strong woman. She's she's lifted the Denny Stones, she weighs about 60 odd kilos. She's tiny looking, but she's so impressive. So I think we're gonna take her on and like sponsor her and she's gonna be the first like paid athlete through the Stoltman brand. That's amazing. Which is like it's a, it's awesome, but it's not because she's a woman. It's not because she's not a guy. It's because she's an amazing yeah, person. She's fucking yeah. Good. Yeah. And she's yeah. she's a beast. And that's the for us that's all it is. It's not like, okay, well, maybe take on, I don't know, another woman, another guy, whatever it is, but it's just having that that person that has the same core values as you and the company and you can relate to, you know? So mm -hmm. she just works hard. She does her YouTube, she does coaching, she's doing everything by herself. And if we can just give her that little help financially, then, you know, we're doing our bit. And it, it just feels so nice that the, the business aspect can do that. But that equality thing, yeah, people just jump on that and like they don't really back it up a lot of the time. You know, it's mm. like, oh, we want everything the same for, you know, women, men, trans, but whatever else it is, you know, and, and in reality, it's not. They want that equality just for that. Um, to say that they've got the diversity. Of course, that's all yeah. it is. Yeah, and it, it's like, fuck off, man. You, you don't yeah. believe that. I think the, the one thing that a lot of people don't understand though, and we spoke about this before, is that if you've got your head screwed on your shoulders, you want a quality of opportunity, not a quality of outcome. Mm. Because if we're looking for a quality of outcome, that would mean that, for example, just on this set now, we'd have to have two women, two men, just for the sake of saying of course. A, a quality of outcome. But we don't want that, mm. because that just means like, I, I, it was, I used to work for the police, and there was, there was some of it happening in the police then, where it was like, right, we've got to recruit this many women, this many men, this many people, this ethnic background. So that's the quality of outcome in terms of, it wasn't who was best for the job. It was just like, let's yeah. let's make it look like we're diverse because we're recruiting this, this and this. And I think a lot of people push for that. And again, it's not what you want. You want the best person for the best roles. Mm -hmm. Did With the with the police fitness test, do they have different ones for girls and guys? Men's and women's, yeah. See, I, I don't agree with that. So the SAS, guys and girls have to do the exact same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're getting shot on the battlefield and I would have to be physically capable as the guys. I love that with the SAS. I think that is yeah. so strong yeah. that they have the same fitness test. So why with the police test would the girls have to hit so much? I think it was only for the strength test. But it's staying for the SAS still. Yeah. The strength test was exactly the same. I did what you did. We didn't go into the SAS. We just applied for the program. But we did the same tests. I'm guessing the only reason they might have done that is because like women are at a disadvantage in terms of strength due to testosterone mm. and other stuff that could there be different change? departments like maybe women wouldn't be doing whatever i don't yeah, know yeah maybe i don't know I'm not sure i don't know how they come up with it but i just mm. remember there's, it is just there's interesting, a, isn't it? a difference yeah but i think now i mean look you're just you're a fucking beast you know <laughs> i can lift at atlas stones yeah, yeah we saw that oh yeah it's incredible <laughs> i did like 16 i think that i had a, the smallest weight though but yeah. still it was ridiculous <laughs> the way you were lifting them it was unbelievable but i think that's the the nice thing to see is that you know 
we've got and, and this expo we're down for as well in Liverpool. It's, there's Donna Moore, who's former world's strongest woman. She is insane. Wow, what like, a transformation! Like Jeez. unbelievable. She's looking like she was like big and strong, but now she's cut down, and just unbelievable. And the women are just monsters. It's, it's, it's scary sometimes. <laughs> it's really. I find it's weird. I don't know why, but I, probably because I'm more used to like the men's side of things, obviously because we're competing. But I get more of a buzz, I think, watching some of the women's stuff because it's so incredible yeah. that the how seriously they're all taking it now yeah. and it's stepping like up. Watching stepping Chloe up. do that, Denny Stones at Arnold's was one of the most impressive things you see because Donna and Moore filled it. Uh, <laughs> two heavy, other heavyweights two, filled it. Two heavyweight women. And then she filled it the first time, she filled it the second time, came back and tipped it up the third time. And what a buzz. She, like I said, she's tiny, ain't she? She's it's unbelievable. Just okay and just seeing her do that was, oh was like 140. 100, 100, 30, 160 is it? Something, no. something stupid. Yeah, and you, I, I was just like this. And it's just raw grip. It's yeah. just like hook grip she did it. Really? And then the oh. third attempt as well, you're like... After being knackered how's already. That, how's yeah. that possible? That's so oh, impressive. So strong. Because yeah. like, everyone wrote her off, think, a lot of people laugh because she's like, oh, yeah. how's this week? Yeah. A girl like you going to lift this and it's, <coughs> oh, it's unbelievable. One the underdog, that's the old Yeah, yeah it, was, oh, it was amazing to see. So. Yeah. so no, I think yeah, the equality thing, I think, yeah, that's... But it's changing. You know, it is definitely yeah, yeah, changing. I think we're... We're in a lot better place than we were, you know, a few years ago, and I think it is improving, and and that's the, the positive thing. You know, you try and take the positives out of, out of what's going on and all the rest of it. So, hopefully, you know, in another few years, everything will be kind of level, and, you know, um, I don't know if women will be in. I hope women aren't, because women are tough. Like you are fucking tougher than us. Honestly, mentally as well. Like, go through childbirth. You got to have something. You got to be tough to do that. Ah, uh, yeah, I've heard it's very. Uh, Especially much in popping up. Fucking one of you guys, Jesus oh, Christ! Our poor mum never spoke to us for ten years <laughs> after she gave birth to us. What What were you actually when was, you were born? I was ten pounds something. Ten, ten, ten yeah, four, we're, ten, yeah. Ten. We were all over ten pound babies. All of us, uh, yeah. Ten to eleven pound baby so I have no idea. I was seven nine. My sister was five six. Really? I was literally bigger than my sister when she when she was like one. I, I was quite a chunky child. Chunky child. I was a chunky child. <laughs> I was strong though. I came out not maybe came not as strong as you, but I came out strong and raring to go. Nice episode. <laughs> <laughs> To interject on this podcast today, it is sponsored by Athletic Greens. And this is a product myself and Ben have been taking since before we went to the States. So we're talking over about two months now and we really, really have seen the benefits. Now, for me personally, and I wanted to chat a little bit today about what I've seen because obviously... I'm training so much for this 100k and I'm only two days out now, can you believe it? But what I found with the AG1, so if you are on YouTube, if you're not on YouTube, say hi. This is the product that we have been taking and what I found personally is that it actually supports better sleep quality and recovery. So recovery of how I'm feeling in myself and then also supporting mental clarity and alertness, which is obviously a really big thing when you are training, maybe not even to my extent because Ben still had the benefits, especially of the mental clarity. And then also when you think about it, it's a lot cheaper than getting all the different supplements because they're all in one. And this is something that, again, myself and Ben thinks absolutely incredible. You can get a product in one like this. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is gonna be giving you a free, a free one year supply of your immune system supporting vitamin D and also five free travel packs with your first purchase first purchase couldn't speak then first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash not so fit so that's athleticgreens.com slash not so fit we'll pop it in the description for you anyway the travel packs are the ones that me and Ben actually took to America I literally think we took about 40 I don't know how we got them there but they are incredible don't forget to hit the link it's funny for seeing wee babies out I, I get I, I don't understand how babies come out you know when you hold their hand the first time yeah and they've got these little baby nails and tiny. Little <laughs> it's fascinating seeing them like squat as well. You know when they're like kids and it's yeah. perfect. You're like on deadlift and you're like. Have, have you seen wow. like part of the reason of why they can do that? Because a lot of people think it's just because they're hyper mobile. But the the reason why they can get in that um, really good squat is is because the the way that the counterbalance. So obviously when they're a baby, the head's really big. So when they come down, they can get into that deep squat because the head actually counterbalances them forward a little bit and keeps them steady. Really? Might be one of your benefits. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. 
Because <laughs> everyone thought it was because they're hypermobile, but yeah, there's, some, so, okay. there's some coach who was talking about online it's because the head's so heavy, it keeps them balanced. No way. Forward, yeah. It's yeah. fascinating to see for a baby's just oh, it's yeah, so perfect, right. isn't it? Like, that's how you do a squat, Movement, is watch yeah. a baby yeah. squat. It's a deep squat. Yeah, like that. <laughs> so, when you started training, or when you were getting into training, where, when was the point where, like, you're in the gym, I'm training, and you're like, fucking hell, I'm getting quite strong here. Like, mm. I, I'm really picking up some load and then when did it start getting more serious into the strongman stuff of both of you? Um, I, I started training when I was 16 so Tom was only 6 at the time so um, I, just, I just in my head I, I, I got this thing about being strong from like a, a young age like I remember being young wanting to lift up cars and my granddad there's a picture of her granddad our Polish granddad carrying a log like this big fucking tree and he was so happy it was like a black and white photo and it always stuck me and I thought, geez, that'd be cool to do. So like when I was 16, started training. You know, I don't know what you were like, but I was in there for like four or five hours every day. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, just posing, looking posing pumping, yeah. just I was, mate. And then I'd go to go to the Asda, I'd buy a whole chicken, yeah. two litres of milkshake, <laughs> down and back back the gym again. Like, oh, that's all life was yeah. back then. I, it was so fucking cool. Stringers it was on. great. It was yeah, great. Time. Stringers on, just yeah. oh look at the veins, yeah. man! Like doing <laughs> like flies, like squeezing your chest and all the veins popping. It was amazing. That's all that mattered in life at that point. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Do your homework. Ah, fuck off. <laughs> and then you had your, your popper shirt for the Friday night, and I yeah. used to rip that off. Legacy it. music. Oh, oh Ziz, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the Ziz. Oh, that's the one. My yeah, bro. Yeah. Just, that was it. That was the. But yeah, was also, yeah, I, I started training when I was sixteen, and then just really got into it. But then I started working away in oil rigs when I was eighteen. And then that was, that was pretty tough, but there was always a gym there on the oil rigs. So that allowed me to train, so on and so forth. Like I said, I was really into bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I then started noticing I was getting quite strong. Bench was going really well, deadlift, squats, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there was a local competition, I think when I was 25, 26. So I've been training for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, a local deadlift competition, and I entered that and I was thinking I was going to get pumped. I thought was, there's no chance when I win this. Um, and I ended up winning it. Um, and then met a friend called Peter. He convinced me to try Strongman. Again, I was like, fuck off, mate, you idiot. Like, these guys are beasts. I'm just some little skinny runt from Invergordon. Don't be daft. Um, long story short, did it. Trade quite well. Entered first, got on Strongest Man, won it. Um, and then won it for five times consecutively. And then... Big Tommy came along. Yeah, so I think I Big beast. started at I started at seventeen. Sixteen, seventeen years old. I never really I didn't like I wasn't like look into kind of the strength stuff and that I was just football then yeah, with autism mm -hmm. and stuff, quitting football, just went straight into that. You know, Luke kinda of wanted I wanted to go down a different path of life and I think Luke wanted me to kinda of push, you know, that'll help me get confidence mm -hmm. up and mentally, physically. So yeah, I joined the gym sixteen and um, I think within the first kind of year, I think you've seen a lot of kind of, you know, I was physically a bigger guy, you know, six foot five, six foot six back then. And, uh, you know, was lifting these kind of weights that a lot of people were lifting after two or three years, you know, mm. it was just mentally, you know, I couldn't talk to people. I would head down all the time. It was only Luke that would kind of, I talked to, I'd only get advice of Luke. So when Luke went offshore, that's when it was hard for me because I'd walk into this gym like, and just get like a stage fright, what do I do? Everybody's looking mm -hmm. at me, girls are looking at me, boys are looking at me. And I'm, so it's kind of, it was on and off for a while. And then, yeah, fast forward. So when I first watched, look at his kind of first Scotland Strongest Man, uh, seeing him win, I was like, wow, this this is what I want to do. You know, I was in a normal gym, but I want to go and lift these out the stones and cars and seeing him do it, I was like, this is superhuman. Like, how does he do this? So uh, after that, joined a strongman gym and. That environment for me was so much better than a you know a public gym because there was no mirrors, there's no posers, it was just people, a big a dirty old school gym, you know dumbbells everywhere, people just bigger people just kind of having fun and laughing yeah. and doing it, and that's what I what, wanted, you know. So again, went with Luke, kind of started meeting Pete, uh, Luke's friend, another and some other boys joined them, and it was just a wee support group I had in the gym, and then I started getting more confidence, and I think started getting confidence in myself. That's when I started you know getting better, and then. Luke entered me into it and was Scotland Strong, I go straight into Scotland. Mm. Yeah. yeah, straight into Just straight, straight into the deep end, Scotland Strong as man. And I was kind of like, what the fuck? Like, why am I doing this? <laughs> like, this is, you know, against obviously Luke and these other guys. And so I ended up coming fifth in the qualifier and fifth in the final. But the thing was, I, I came fifth and I made Luke win the title. So. Didn't quite me. <laughs> 
I know, if, I, if, I, if I got beat, he wouldn't have won it. My so strength made me win it. Okay, <laughs> your strength. I helped. I helped him on the way to his title. So then again, I. So it was quite good because that, again, that's kind of when, for me, when the brother thing started because I was like, I can do this. Luke's doing amazing, and I, you know, just doing as yeah. good. You know, my first competition at nineteen and fifth in Scotland. I was like, it's all right. And then you know, fast forward a few years, in and out of competing. You know, I was dropping out a few competitions again when I got bigger of autism because of cameras and the lights. Yeah. And then, um, so I was like, I kind of started seeing myself that I could do something here when I quit my job. I quit my job at. 23, 24? Mm, 20, maybe 21, 22, I thought. Was it? Oh, I'll like oh, say 22. So I was, I was a security guard in like a construction site. So like two weeks before Christmas, went in and I was like, I cannot be our sitting here. <laughs> Threw my tie away, didn't tell my wife, didn't tell my family. Went home, she was like, why are you home? I was like, I quit my work. And she went absolute mental at me because she was like, you know, straw man doesn't yeah. pay. Two weeks before Christmas, she was going to chat me out the house. Out. <laughs> I, was like, I said, within a year, I said, I promise you I'll, you know, do good at the sport. So, yeah, I think when I said that, you know, because that's when I kind of, the reason I quit is because I watched Eddie Hall's documentary and how he kind of yeah. just, you know, threw everything away for this one sport and you can go back to your, you know, your work life if you wanted. And that's when I realised, right, you know, I can do this. And within the first year of uh, being full-time, my results and everything went up. And then at 23, I was like, yeah, I can do this. I can win World's Strongest Man. And then my mum passed, I, I passed away. 2016. 2016. And then after that, I made a three-year plan to myself that in 2019, we'd get to the final worlds. In 2020, I would podium. In 2021, I would win it. Was that I, off the back of that? Was that kind of like a catalyst to that, was it? Yeah, well? yeah. So yeah. I, and I, I, went, I said that live on Facebook. I said that to Eddie Hall. That, that was my plan. And it, every, and it helped. So I got to the final worlds in 2019. I podium at 2020. And I won it at 2021. So like I, kept, I did a promise kind of to my mum. Yeah. And that three-year plan worked perfectly like that. So it was kind of a special feeling. And that's... I think, again, when my mum passed away as well, that's when I realised, kind of, right, I, I want to promise her and, you know, win Worlds, and that's when I kind of believed as well, you know, so that was a very special moment. Mm. So. I bet that was an emotional win then after that, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah especially, you know, obviously, the getting to the final, I think, was very emotional for us, because obviously, my dad was there, you know, and it was Father's Day as well, the, on the final of the world. Oh, wow. so that was yeah. a very special moment, and then, obviously, podium, but then winning it, and actually, you know, because Eddie Hall said in 2020, all right, you've done the first two years, now you You've got one more year to keep that promise to your mum. I and mean, that was a year that drove me to, you know, to do it and, you know, yeah. to keep that promise. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And that's why the first one meant so much to us. So mm. It was a good one. It was almost written in the stars then. Yeah, you know, 100%. Wasn't? Yeah, so. Yeah, it was pretty, um, pretty special. I'll just go back for quickly. When right. you and Tom was, yeah. when we were starting the gym. You know, so, I thought you said about Dubai. No, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> um, so, like, I used to go offshore for maybe, like, three weeks or three months, whatever it was. Yeah. I was working in the world. And, um... It's like Facebook wasn't as big, it was still there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So like I'd be sitting off in the rig, finish my shift, go back, you have to log on to the computer. So logging on, going to Facebook and uh see like Tom be training, he's about eighteen and he's pulling like a three hundred kilo deadlift. I'm like, fucking hell, what's this guy doing? <laughs> it's <laughs> wild. And then he's doing like a two hundred kilo bench press. I'm stuck out in Africa and Angola somewhere offshore. He couldn't train. I was well in those type of places we kind of made a makeshift gym yeah. out of scaffold and stuff and just um, started to get a pump on you yeah. know, it was uh, it was a bit it wasn't as easy um, but yeah like the 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 level that Tom got to so quickly you just knew there was something special yeah. Yeah. you know when you see special people or gifted people you know mm -hmm. Tom very much had a gift I know it's not just about his his physicality it's also about the way Tom is as a person, I don't mean to speak at you, but um, you know, he's such a very special person and a unique <coughs> person. You know, I've, I've said, and a lot of people said, Tom is at this moment in time, the best strong man in the modern era. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's not disrespect to Eddie or Thor or, or anyone like that, but Tom will beat anyone, 100%. He is the, the, the best strong man of the last 10 years, I would say, 100%. Oops. He's, he's no, I def no, definitely, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I haven't said that much to you, but um, what Tom does, like, and what Tom's gone through to to let him be this, you know, we talk about struggles, we talk yeah. about, you know, growing up was tough, but uh, can you imagine leaving the house, this is, you probably don't remember too much, but leaving the house for Tom was one of the most terrifying things for him to do by himself, you know, so, Every day going to school was terrifying, was scary. Didn't know what was going to happen. So going through that and still coming out the other side and becoming the best strongman in the modern era now, 
that's what that's what resilience is. You know, that's that, and you probably don't realise that, Tom. That's the thing. But training that resilience over and over and over and over again, hundreds of times a day. You know, going through that terrifying situation, going to school, getting on the bus, staying over at your friend's house. That's things that Tom tried and couldn't do, but he kept trying, kept trying. And that's the resilience now that Tom has and his mindset now. Fuck me, man. It's like, I thought I was, I had a good mind on my shoulder, but Tom is just so concrete in what he does. So I remember saying, so we both speak to the same uh, psychologist. So it's a clinical psychologist. And like, she explains like my way of thinking is very up and down. I'm a bit more emotional and all the rest of it. But because Tom won World's Strongest Man last year, his his mindset, he knows he can win it. So he's like, well, I'm going to win it again this year yeah. by 10 and a half points, the biggest point margin. <laughs> and he didn't have to do the last event, which is fucking mental. Crazy, and I'm dying there. You know, I'm like, fucking hell, I've got to do, oh, fucking Tom doesn't have to do this last <laughs> fucking event. And I'm like, just getting seven, like seventh is still good. I made the final and, you know, it was good. Yeah, it's awesome. But, like the level that Tom is, he doesn't even realise. He's, you know, you don't realise, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. That's my thing. Yeah, yeah, it's very um, humbling. Yeah, yeah, and and but that thing of like going through that hardships in school, um, and you touch on your anxiety, you know, going through that and kind of fighting against it. That's what builds up that resilience all the time, and and that's what we need more of in this country. And and I think yeah, big Tom is a testament to that. And yeah, fucking. Idiot. You do, do you know what? How, how, how you got into full time strong man? Oh, yeah. That's when you got better at strong man. Because <laughs> of me as well. <laughs> Watch this story. Yeah? So, uh, fucking, hell, I'm telling too many stories. Um, I've had too much fucking caffeine. Um, so yes, yeah, so, like Tom had been full time for a little while. Yeah. He we did a competition in Dubai and Tom got invited out for um, a month, Incubate. all inclusive. It was like an incubator training program. So Tom goes out and I'm stuck in this oil rig. Um, it's one of the worst places in the North Sea. I'm on the bottom bank. It's a single single bed, so my, my shoulder's spilling yeah, over. How are you feeling? In, yeah, it's into not bunk a, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah, it's it's just disgusting. And so yeah. bear in mind, you have to stay out there in the rigs for like three weeks. So I'm not coming home. You have to fly out in a helicopter. Should have seen my bed. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like I was on social media and I'm seeing Tom live it up in Dubai. Yeah. And I've got fucking Big Jeff above me. Big hairy scarf, farting and snoring. <laughs> I'm like, this is bullshit. I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm like 33 years old. I've been working offshore for a few years. And what am I doing in my life? So I messaged Kushi, my wife, and said, "Look, this is the last. This is the last I'm ever going offshore. I'm never going on another oil rig uh, in my life." And and that was it. You know. So it was in a roundabout way because of Tom. You know. Living his, helping his yeah. best life. Living the high life. Yeah, so he's, he's so like, he's so good to me. Like he made me win Scotland's strong, strongest yeah. man, made me go professional. I might even retire next year <laughs> to win world's strongest man, so, you know? Yeah. But he's, yeah, and like you say, he's very <laughs> humble as well, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you're you telling that though, it reminds me of um, <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk often talks about his kids and how his kids will never ever be as, as good as he is because He's been through so much struggle in terms of being um, a refugee. He came from like a load of shit. He's had a lot of mental battles to get to, to get to the top of where he is. And because his kids will be born into privilege, they'll never have those struggles mm. that they'll have to deal with, that they'll have to develop a plan with, that they'll have to get over and, and then achieve something. And it's that resilience bit in the middle that really builds a champion, that really develops a, a person, not just physically, but mentally, to be able to deal with those things coming up. And I think... Like we've been with before, in society, there's so many people that get things like that. It, mm. uh, another example, I think there's every single lottery winner has lost it all or become mm. bankrupt because they don't have that resilience bit where you have to earn shit in the middle and you have to face adversity and challenges to get to places, which then, it, it's almost like a, what they call in your hand? Calluses. It's mm. almost like a mental calluses that you build up through going through that shit that makes you ready to perform at the top. Definitely. Like, without failure, like, what is there? You know, you're just going to experience happy things all the time. If people give it to you like that, like, you're never going to have that enjoyment. I was, I was listening to, who was it? I can't remember who I was listening to, but it was something, like, they find they don't have that much enjoyment now because it just comes to them. Mm. And I think that is, like, 
Like that's why I'm going out swimming in the morning, like at four four thirty in the morning, because I get to see a sunrise. Like seeing that every day makes me so fucking happy. I get, I sound like a maniac sometimes when I'm out there swimming, but it genuinely makes me happy seeing that. And I'm thinking, why can't you just go back to that basic roots? You know, because again, when we were, you know, thousands of years ago, that's what we used to worship was the sun. You know, mm. sun coming up. It's like ah. Oh, this is amazing, you feel so good, so much energy from it, so much positivity, and you know, all these, and it must be nice, you know, getting handed everything, you know, not everyone having to want for anything, mm -hmm. but what type of generation is that building? Um, and that's that's a worrying thing, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a slippery slope then, because we don't have those people that go out and, and you know, trailblaze, you know, go out and kind of discover new things, or like, why would they? Yeah. You know, if you're, getting everything you want if you're wanting all you're wanting is material things or you know this or that or this or that. that's cool if that's what you want but then you're not having to work for that and i think yeah. like you said ben yeah it's it's building up that that resilience and i was again i was listening to bear grills in a podcast and that's what he was saying about building up that resilience that is the it's like in school you know the in high school or secondary school whatever you know, all the cool kids were the guys, good looking guys, muscles, popular, all this. And the wee shy kids at the back, you know, felt lonely, anxious, mental health issues. And for them to battle through every day, like Tom with his autism, battling through that every day, building up with that, that resilience and that that toughness in your mind, that's what creates a champion. Mm -hmm. Not getting fucking loads of money and getting handouts. That doesn't create anything. That just creates a generation of people that expect are entitled. And that's what a lot of people are, is, is entitled. You know, we're becoming an entitled society, I think. And, you know, as soon as you become entitled, that's that's a dangerous thing to be, I think. Mm -hmm. Did, so just following on from what you were saying there, mm. obviously with social media, you two are on social media now. Was that a really weird shift for you? Because I feel like, sunrise open water swims it's very get off my fucking phone don't want to but then now similar to us it's part of your job mm. and you kind of have to also be on it to be at the forefront and to be in people's minds and things like that so how was that kind of right we we need to be on social media we're going to be known we might be trolled there's gonna just be a bit of a, quite interesting mm. about that mm. yeah i mean Social media, I think obviously for both of us, coming from where we're from, you know, like quiet place. Uh, I never really had social media, didn't know much about it. Even early life's a straw man, you know, I was just, I just used it just because my friends had it. And mm. then, yeah, when I started actually, you know, starting going in the limelight, it was a lot of negativity for me, obviously, with autism and stuff as well. Um, you know, people didn't believe, even when I first started, that I didn't have <coughs> autism again. They were asking why I was shy, why I was Luke doing stuff. So to kind of, Re, yeah, it's kind of like going back to my childhood where, and when I first started, like, you know, why these guys question me again and stuff. So social media at first for me was a really toxic place. And I really mm. used to take all the negative stuff. And because of autism, it's because when I was in school, this teacher said to me, you're, you're never going to be anything in your life. And that hit me for a while. So what then, kind of teacher says that? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So it's that, and then that's kind of like then with this kind of things on the social media, when I seen those negative comments, I had it in my head for a long, long time going, Am I actually going to be like that, or is this guy actually thinking this and stuff? You know, so it really kind of affected me. Then again, I just learned the resilience, you know, and just started ignoring it all, laughing, you know, having Sinead there to kind of just, you know, get me kind of through it. It sounds silly, but you know, that's how I just did it. And mm -hmm. then started getting more and more kind of on, obviously, YouTube as well, social media. It was a big learning curve for me, but you know, nowadays it's kind of just like you need to just kind like of put it in one ear, out the other ear, all this negative stuff and. Yeah, it comes naturally. I mean, again, with the camera kind of side of things as well, for me to learn about social media and talking to camera stuff, I you, I turned my gym into a studio so that I could get good at the social media, get good at the interviews, get good at the lights around me and everything. Because I knew when you get better at a sport, there's going to be a lot of you know attention on you. And for me to get better at that, that's the thing I struggled with at the start was, right, I need to put myself in that uncomfortable situation. And that's what I did. And then that's when social media and all the interviews so, oh, this is easy now, you know? So that's kind of how I did it. And I started doing it, turning the negative into positives and all the positive comments I look at, the negative just to the back yeah. burner yeah. now. So, yeah, so they're learning myself to do that because a few years ago, I would have just got Luke to be like, oh, can you do this for me? And, mm -hmm. you know, I would have just 
not or just quit it, but I just wanted to, because I knew I could make something of the sport, I wanted to, you know, get my ma mind kind of tuned in and, and I knew that there's loads of cameras and that's what I did. I turned it into a studio for a day or that's two. Amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Because you've, you've then put yourself, yourself, you've gone out of your way to put yourself in an uncomfortable position and been like, right, this is going to feel so uncomfortable, I'm going to feel super anxious. Oh, yeah. That is so but good. It's always those things, isn't it? On the other side Love of being that. scared, there's always something that is great's gonna happen. Yeah, like yeah. all the all the best things in life happen on the other side of being scared. So the fact that you were able to I mean, I've only known you guys for like six months, but even when I met you until you spoke about it, I never knew cause mm. until I would have watched videos that you even had autism. Yeah, and I think yeah, that's yeah. obviously only a credit to yourself that you've just taken that time to really I suppose master another side of the trade because I mean, you two guys are amazing advocates for the the sport of strongman i think a lot more people see that now because of, of you two and what you guys are doing for the mm. sport as well i mean if you look back at like youtube and when we first did youtube and first did social media the youtube videos for myself like i hardly did one <laughs> word you know i might i was like i uncomfortable getting head down and everything and then i just started getting better and better and better and it was it was amazing to see for myself you know i look back and Go like that's not Tom Stoughton. Like how? Yeah, look yeah, well, back like, on your first video. I'm just like, hey guys, it's Tom <laughs> Stoughton. Thanks for watching. And then he says the rest. Yeah. I'm kind of like, even just the process as well. And that is unbelievable for myself to see it. So, you know, you can kind of, like, I'm proud that I can even do 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 that kind of stuff now. You know, and even interviews like this. You know, at the start I was like, two or three words and let him do it all. And now it's kind of we're getting the balance of talking and now yeah, as well. So enjoying it. Yeah, it's good. So. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's done well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like doing reps in the gym, though, isn't it? You get yeah, better. Mm, just training, mm, just, just, yeah, yeah. just getting yourself used to that. It's um, yeah, and Tom's Tom's smashing it now. Jeez, oh, it's, it's uh, yeah, pretty amazing to see. You know, and that's a nice thing to think. You know, see, Mum's not here to see it, but like, I know how proud she would be of that. You know, and, and that's a testament to to the work that Tom's put in. You know, like you say, putting yourself in that uncomfortable environment, that position. And then now he's, Jesus, like a, f a couple of weeks ago before he did soccer aid, we sat having breakfast and this is so mad. Like we're having breakfast. But our, our town has like 4,000 people, so it's really small. Uh, and so we had breakfast and Tom's like, oh, just opened up his WhatsApp chat group. There's like uh, uh, Usain Bolt, Roberto Carlos, Cafu, all these mad <laughs> people. And I'm like, Fucking hell. <laughs> How is that even possible for you to be in a chat group with Usain Bolt, Berbatov, Robert, all these guys, and Roberto Carlos is asking where the nearest pub is because he's wanting a, <laughs> wanting a beer after the game. And I'm just, I'm just sat there like looking at him, just like, this isn't life. You know, this is yeah. so far mm. from that teacher that said to Tom that you wouldn't ever amount to anything. Tom's now with, you know, the fastest man that's ever lived. And now, you know, there's a photo with you and Usain Bolt, the fastest man to ever live and the strongest yes. man, which is like, what a fellow. it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's so, it's so, um, so cool to see it. And, uh, and that is, you know, again, that resilience and that training and training and getting your body to adapt to that environment that you put it in. Um, and that's all, I mean, that's the thing, like anyone can genuinely do that. You know, it's just having that determination that, and that, ability just to be consistent every day and do th do the things that make you feel uncomfortable but then over time they become yeah. less and less and less and, and then that uncomfortable situation become comfortable and then here we are sitting here with a two times fucking world strongest yeah. man <laughs> speaking about uncomfortable situations uh oh oh my god i forgot yes. about the blues <laughs> this what, is my we, friend we need, we need to get like an official intro so if you can like <clears throat> what swallow, do you mean but you can do like a you can introduce the podcast. Do you want me to do the hello and welcome back? The podcast. And then if, Luke, you just announce yourself. Okay. And like, uh, maybe one or two of you, how many accolades you can fit in. Okay. I know there's a library list of them um, with the helium. And then same for you, Tom. How do you get into do you it? Do you to bite it? Bite what do you mean? Do you take this off? Who's, going, who's going first? Am I going oh, first? Oh, you go oh Luke's already nearly out. I might no, bite okay. up at the others. I might just bite the corner. That's what I'm saying. Oh, bite the corner of the star. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, oh shit. Whoever gets the helium first, you go first. I think Luke, Luke's well. I don't even know. Oh, I've no. got, I've got you got go it. Go on. Go on, Tom. Oh my god. Get right, in, get right into the mic as well. Hello, guys. I'm Tom Stoughton, two time world's strongest man. 
<laughs> Jeez, oh. I feel like you- <laughs> I didn't even sound that high. It's still. It's still I feel funny. like you weren't even that high. <laughs> no, you're still. Uh, that's uh, wild. Uh, still good for that. I can uh, hear it in my voice. Right, so. <laughs> you it off, yeah. oh, oh, she's on it. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to That So Thick of a Podcast with your hosts, Lucy Davis and Benjamin Housen. I told you, mine goes really high pitched. You sound like a little... Yeah, but that's because my voice is <coughs> already quite high. Wow, you sound is... like a little six-year-old boy with a finger up his bum. <laughs> Jeez, oh. I was trying to hear that, didn't I? Oh, here we go. Luke's word change. Hey guys, I'm Luke Stolten, <laughs> Europe's strongest man. And the best log presser in the world. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tom, get another moment. Yeah, we'll yeah, get some of those. Get some of that on your bike. That was great. That was really great. <laughs> Might need to do the guy with his head. Hello then. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> do the, do the, what, bite, I reckon bite, bite into the head. Bite, yeah, bite the head. Oh, you're going to rip, rip straight in. Rip, rip, rip. Oh, we're going straight in. You just... <laughs> Wait, no, I still off. use my star. Why did you rip it open? Use, use, rip it open use the star, that's the bit that I oh went God. into before. <laughs> there you go. Tom literally got so excited then. Oh, here we there go. There you go. There you go, that's one. Hello, I'm Tom Stoltman, two times world's well, strongest man. Why was so high? Yours, yours is really oh, high. Okay. Right, go on, Ben. Go on, You're not on it, are you? Yeah, you are. Whew. More. <laughs> oh, That's be. probably enough. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Not So Fickle podcast with your host Benjamin Helden and Lucy Davis. Today on the podcast, we have Luke and Tom, the world's strongest men. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That is wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 my head goes off. Uh, oh, so is I. Oh, God. God. This was actually really high pitched. Oh, that was weird. That was a strange voice. S- speaking of um, <laughs> so- so- soccer aid, <laughs> you're a big football, <laughs> football fan, aren't you, Tom? Yep. Big Rangers fan. You got a season ticket again for this? this no, you got you got a lot of home and away. Yeah, games, we got home and away. You know, I don't have season tickets, but yeah, I got you know, obviously try and just go to as many games as I can. You know, so again, Luke talks about cold water, and that's his kind of escape from strawman. Yeah, and going to football games is my escape from strawman. You know, I we don't train on the weekend, so you know it's a four-hour drive to the game, four hours back. But is it? yeah, so but that's just you know I enjoy. It. I take my mates down with me, and you know we have a nice kind of just chat in the car, and then when I go there, no one really talks about strawman. It's just about 50,000 kids, you know, watching yeah. football, singing songs. It's an amazing feeling. And then I get to go back home and recharge for the new week ahead. And I do that every week. So. That's oh, it. that's so nice. Yeah. So you went, Tom went to Seville. Yeah, so uh, I mean, yeah, I went to, so I went to Tom Seville. Went. So they were playing in the Europa Cup final, you know, and uh, it, it was a day before I was flying out to World Strongest Man. And a lot of people were saying to me, oh, Tom doesn't care about worlds. He doesn't care about strongman. But if they had followed me, you know, I go to Rangers games week in, week out, and going over to Spain, it probably was less time travelling to Spain than it was to, yeah. um, what do you call it, Glasgow. So, yeah, I went over there, like a three, four day holiday, and then, you know, proved everyone wrong, I yeah. ended up winning World Strongest Man. Yeah, so I try and, like I said, follow them all around the world. It's just a thing that I love to do, and obviously being a massive Rangers fan my whole life, it's crazy that I could get it going, you know, some benefits of, you know, getting to meet the players and That's chilling it. out with them. And then I got invited down to uh, do some goalkeeper training with the, with the team as well on the 15th of July. So that'd really? be quite cool. So, oh, that's sick. Yeah, so that'd be quite good, you know. And then, again, even at soccer, you know, having Arsene Wenger and Petr Cech saying, you know, in three days you've learned more than what people can in a year. And having Arsene Wenger stand over you and say, look, you know, you're a great footballer, it's like... You're blind, mate, because G is all I actually watched that. You did really well. It's yeah. one of those days. You got down well. Oh, I got done, but you see how long it took me to get back up. <laughs> well, we were speaking. Because did, did you lose quite a lot of weight when you did that? Yeah, so I mean, obviously at Worlds, I was maybe peaking at like 192, 193. But at Soccer Aid, it was kind of, I think by the time I got to the game, I was maybe up to about 180. So I made 10K, but it's we were there for four days. And it's three meals a day I was having. There was not really any of those kind of snacks. Are you laughing at? No, just, no, you said when he came back, he was talking about, I think it was last week. Yeah, no, like, I've lost, lost 17k oh, since then. No, so but you were, saying, you, know, you were saying, like, oh, it was dead tough down at Sock Raid, just three meals a day. I had no sweets for like three days. <laughs> Aye, but you know me, I love my sweets. Eh? <laughs> it's like a mix. Three days without any sweets. Wow. It's like that was the hardest thing going. <laughs> but I thought it was good. It was good because, you know, I don't want to be big all the time. And having those three or four meals, 
I was enjoying food again, you know, and then yeah. I came back home and just followed that diet for the whole time. So I'm not like we had like, three or four meals a day I'm on right mm. now, and like I said, I'm enjoying losing weight, enjoying kind of being a bit more fit, and even doing that football. You know, I mean, like being a goalkeeper, I thought. Uh, you know, you don't need that much fitness, but fuck me, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Petr Cech was the hardest working person out of the whole team, you know, the way he was up and down, the short movements, and I was trying to keep up with him, and oh my God, it's unbelievable just watching these professionals do what they do. It's mind-boggling when you watch them in the stadium, but when you're actually, you know, in their presence, you're like, these guys are unbelievable athletes, you know, and the footballers, but they just chill out with you after. I mean, you know, every single one of them got to the pub afterwards and <laughs> just wanted to drink, and it's, yeah, you just enjoyed ourselves, and yeah, lost a lot of weight, but I enjoyed every minute of that. Yeah. And I feel much fitter now as well. And there's no point being 190 kilogram all year round. And now I can actually move around, enjoy and live life. stuff, and not yeah. not having to breathe heavy down mics and stuff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what was sorry? What, what was ever like? Because he's a bit of a character, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, Patrick. So we were there first. Patrick's ever came on uh, Saturday, the day before the game. <laughs> I mean, you heard him before you see him. He walked yeah. in. He was screaming. He was just yeah. He was just so good. He's so supportive as well. He gave us a massive kind of motivational talk before the game and uh, you know like he, he was so kind of he talked a lot about the cold showers you know he did that on that I don't know if you've seen the Winhoff kind of show yeah, yeah. and how like cold showers used, his dad used to use that as torture for him and stuff so he was just saying that he does that every single day but yeah Winhoff is an unbelievable professional but man he can party as well you know he was really? at the back of the bus giving it sing songs and stuff but you know, it's just, I think people get the wrong impression of footballers and actually when you see them and like, you know, when you're around them and in their presence, they're unbelievable people. They're just normal people, you know, like me and you. And yeah, Ever was unbelievable. Ever and Berbatov were the two guys that I got on with really, really well, you know. They were really cool guys. And they were so interested in my story as well. Like, you know, you thought that being strong, uh, footballers, they would kind of not really care about strong men, but they were memorised that I was well strong. as man, my story of autism and stuff. It was unbelievable that they sat and listened to me for half an hour. Talking, so. Yeah, I suppose none of those there were the best footballers on earth. So yeah, yeah, I know. well, the strongest man on earth. There. Yeah. There's not many of them. Yeah, it's, good, it's so. cool. Yeah, that's what he said. They, it's, they, they always just say to me, like, "We're just footballers. You've like, you're like actually the best yeah. in the world." In your sport, you know, yeah. yeah. It's the same like you saying, "Bolt as well." You know, the fastest man in the world. It's a cool title, and it's good for you saying a more father because that stadium's where they broke the world record. So. They yeah. had like some their tears in their eyes when they seen the kind of oh, warm up so tracks cool. and stuff. So, oh, I mean, I dropped Mo Farah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh, I curled him and tried to press him above my head. I, he fell from the sky and I caught him. <laughs> so, from the sky. Yeah, Mo Farah. I'm sorry. That would have been some fucking insurance would job, been, wouldn't it? No, it was. I was the Stockman brand playing out of that. Was, <laughs> heart was in my mouth there, man. I was like the lightest guy there, and I dropped him above from above my head. Oh, oh, oh my that would have been bad. With the um, with the I'm going back a tiny little bit, but you were saying you're eating like three or four meals a day now i think when we came to visit you in scotland we you, you were just are you eating like a lot more mm, mm. can you just kind of explain a little bit about food like now i off is off season mm -hmm. like off season yeah. and then food calories before like a comp and before a strong yeah, so talk, talk us for like a normal day mm. yeah <laughs> So let's say about Eggs. Welsh Strongest Man, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so Welsh Strongest Man in our season, so obviously we arrive about, so the week before is our most intense kind of bit with food. Uh, I'm probably up to about 12, 13k, Luke's maybe 11. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, I'm just going to say 100% of just pure crap food. Um, so every morning we have a pancake blowout. Uh, it's kind of like as many kind of pancakes, as many bacon, syrup, sweets as you want. And then usually about, Two, three hours later, we have well, whatever kind of burger joint we want. So it's like a double burger and fries and a shake. That's three times a day. We repeat that. And then and, and then our last meal at night is a kind of pasta kind of base dish mm. with a chocolate cake at the end as well. So, yeah, that's like for... A, like a piece or like a whole... Yeah, well, America, a piece is a whole yeah. piece of cake. So, right. so, uh, yeah. so that's kind of... That's for the whole week we have that, you know, and... Yeah, it's fed. That's serious. It's horrible. Yeah. That's feeding. And that's, especially that, the yeah. portion sizes. You know, like you come to a five guys in the UK, it's big, but in America, it's you know mm, double the size. Yeah, and yeah. you're having four of them a day for seven days, plus you know the pancakes in the morning, yeah. the lasagna or whatever you have at night time as well. It's it's kind of poor toilet. Yeah, yeah, it's not nice. I mean, we went through. So Koosh did a, a thing on how much we spent out in worlds for God. seven days. I think it was like. Over three, 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 yeah, over three thousand dollars, I think. On three thousand dollars in yeah. how many days? I think seven, seven days. days yeah. was, I. So, but th th they got the thing as well because like worlds, they put on like a buffet of whatever food that is they have in the hotel. But 
um, we've got a nutritionist, believe it or not, that tells us to eat this type of food. Best it's nutritionist so, in the world. Yeah, well, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, but it's very uh, just calorie dense because yeah. when you're there, it's not just like physically, uh, very draining mentally as well. So when you're constantly trying to stay switched on, you're burning a lot more calories mm. as well. Then with the heat as well, the and, and that calorie dense food, it just seems to give you that instant boost for us. Um, but then cut when we're back here, back home. Um, it's it's very basic. It's like so maintenance is like seven thousand. Yeah. So there's like three hundred sixty grams of of meat, say like red meat or, or chicken, um, potatoes, uh, and potatoes and veg. We're allowed a red sauce with it. Um, no white sauces, whatever reason. Um, and no f- fizzy. So the only juice we're allowed to drink is cranberry and water. Mm. And then obviously our breakfast is you know eight eggs, as you guys know that. Yeah. Eight eggs, mushrooms, toast, and then looks. Just said that meal, we have that like two or three times. Then we have like a mid morning snack, which is a shake and mm. an oat bar, and then the same at night time. So, yeah, it's two different extremes, Very you extreme, know. So. Yeah, what why is it that's just so interesting because that the second one you said is quite nutritionally balanced, you're having a bit of like mm. carbs, fats, proteins, nutritionally dense food, and then it's quite a big switch. In term, is it generally just to get as much food in as you can for the comp? Yeah, I mean, food yeah. fuel in it is so, so like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And like Luke said, the heat as well, and you know the long hours you're competing. I think you know world's strongest man's like a seven hour. So you you can do one one co- uh, event at like nine a.m. The next event could be at three or four o'clock. So mm. and then having that extra kind of food in your body as well is. And I suppose it, as well, it doesn't stress you as well when you when you're eating food like that. You don't really have to think about it. you order it. It's there. You eat it, and that's it. You know you're getting the calories in. So like it's it's so probably different from like bodybuilding, normal athletics, you know, all this stuff. But but for us, I think it just takes the, the almost the thought process away because mm. we know it's not, it's not a, you know, we're not judged on our looks, we're not judging yeah. our, our fitness necessarily. It's on pure performance. So we just need to get that calories in as quick as we can and almost as easy as we can. So we know we can do that because we're eating so many calories a day. It's almost like it has to be tasty for us to do that. Yeah. If we're yeah. sat there with a, Oh, like brown pasta, wholemeal pasta with tuna. And, it's and so it, precise, I think it's kind of... Yeah, it just it wouldn't be possible for us to do that oh, and yeah. still go out and compete. So we need to have that instant, like, so burger, class, eat that, no problem. Scram that, chips, fine, shake, down, done. Two and a half thousand calories, yeah. easy, no problem. Then before bed, pasta, double meat portion, and the cheesecake, tasty. You know, so it's it's about having that... Um, that that just so easy to eat, um, but that's why we only do it for that week, you know, when we're competing. So it's just purely for that, because when you're done eating that oh, food, Jesus, bro, you man. just don't want to eat Sick another. But you're just done. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it is very intense. It's and it's, what, it's like the week after you get a lot of stress in your body afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So like now, so for example, today because everything has been so high, high calorie, high fat, cholesterol is very taxing in the body, we then go and do stuff with a blood lab who are, are here as well. So we'll get blood taken, they'll take our bloods as well, just analyze everything. Yeah. And then if we need to throw in some more good fats, whatever it is, they can do that and we can do that in our diet. So it's it's the extreme, you know, yeah. that's what strongman is. It's very extreme. It's <laughs> it's the one of the most, I'm, I'm, any sport, any height, you know yourself, you did an ultra marathon. That's fucking bonkers. Yeah, yeah well, I'll probably be running for 12 to 14 hours. And even the other day, like, driving, like sort of. Ben's going to be driving. Like, I've got a massive support crew. And I'm even like, people are going to have chips and burgers because mm. it's like, I don't want a fucking flapjack yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah. And at Ben's even, after some of my long runs, like my longest one was a 16, he was like, Mackey's? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I don't I don't well, eat I, it. I have to physically drive there and make it because why yeah, you don't get enough you, I mean, after running that much, you feel a bit sick. Mm-hmm. And you don't really feel like it. So it's like, okay, what is like... And I've had people being like, well, that's not, nut- I just like, I don't care what's nutritionally healthy. I just want to get in get as in. many calories as I can and I can't be arsed cooking. Mm-hmm. And that's, you don't even have the, well, I've not anyway, because I'm a week out. I haven't had the mental capacity to cook. So I'm just like, mm. order it, whack loads of pasta. Mm. I, I'm basically 90% pasta now, aren't I? Yeah. It's just easy to eat. And mm. people would say like, oh, it's lazy. It's not, it's just, you don't have the mental capacity, mm. which, it's really interesting you hear about like the burgers and the chips and stuff. Someone's calling you lazy because you don't have a nutritional 
whatever meal. It's like, fuck off, I'm running an ultra marathon. Yeah. <laughs> like, go and do that. Like, you fucking idiot. Um, and that's the thing with people. It's like, people can just judge so much. It's like, because yeah. you don't, you see, don't, you've just trained, you've just bursted yourself, like, busted your ass doing all your training, your runs, strongman competitions, whatever. The last thing you want to do after that, because you're competing the next day, you know, you don't want to come back, cook some boiled, fuck, boiled chicken, broccoli, or, you know, whatever. You don't mm, want you that. You, you can't physically eat that. Because, mm. like you say, you're feeling sick anyway. You're feeling pretty drained. Like, oh, I'm going to have to have this. This isn't going to taste nice. But then when it's a burger, when it's something tasty, you're like, yeah, smash that, no problem, boom. Okay, it's still a bit of a chore to do it. But, yeah, Uber Eats is a great thing. <laughs> it's, um, the people who like to throw those comments out anyway, I throw it out to you guys mm. from the sofa sitting in the middle of fucking nowhere and shit all. <laughs> it's like wait until you've, yeah. you've got us with the credential yeah. to be able to throw them out. Probably eating the McDonald's burger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah 100%. Um, you two being obviously, state in the obvious, very large gentlemen. Mm. Have you ever been in situations where you've been in public or out and about or on social occasions and you know, you sometimes get that guy who wants to prove himself or is a bit of a knobhead where you've had kickoffs from people just because you are the size that you are. Um, now and again you get it. It's, it's more, it's, it's weird. I think Tom and I are pretty unoffended. I've never, never experienced that. I mean, I, you get the old chop like, chop and armrest a wee man and stuff, but that's yeah. like friendly, but nothing. Banter. I've never ever had someone seriously that's come up with those. I, I had one, you may have, because sure. I'm old. <laughs> and you were a troublemaker as well. I was a troublemaker, I, I was a lover, not a fighter, mate. Jesus, it's not a very good one. Um, I thought it was one guy that sticks in my head. I was we were working in, I was working in my old job a few years ago in South Korea, and it was roasting hot. And I like I normally wear shorts and a t-shirt, yeah. you know. So that's, we were out for a, a bite, to eat, a couple of drinks with the lads after work, um, and I just went out phone Cushy. I says, "Hey, how's it going? Just out for a couple of beers, whatever." And this guy, this Glaswegian guy, came up to me, and he's like, "What are you fucking? What are you wearing? Like, what do you mean?" I says, mate, I'm on the phone to my wife. I'll speak to you in a minute. I says, Kush, two seconds, I'll phone you back. This guy was like slagging me off, like my dress sense or something. I was like, mate, what are you, what are you talking about? He's like, look at look, look your state, yeah, I think you're a big man wearing shorts and a t I went, it's roasting hot, mate. Look at your sweating, you've got a pair of jeans on and a grey shirt and you're sweating like fuck, what are you talking about? And, you and can he's see, probably on your small and touch clothes as well. So. <laughs> but he was like going, he was getting dead aggressive. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I just went and go, come on, mate, it's all right. And I just gave him a cuddle and just, just squeezed him a little bit. <laughs> Let him know you're there. Yeah, and I was like, right, go and have a good night, mate. I'll yeah. see you later. And then go, went back on the phone to Kush. I was like, I don't know what happened there. But it's little weird things that happen. Like, I don't know. It's, it's strange, but not, you do get a lot. But I think there's more like the aggressive looking guys that get that. You know, a lot of the smaller people as well, the people that are like, chip on the shoulder. up to yeah, my yeah, knee, yeah. Yeah, to your like waist and stuff, yeah. and you're like, right, mate, nah, come on, <laughs> come on. You know, but like, but we're, we're pretty good at not like even, you don't even hear it now, well, you know, yeah, because yeah. You, you get a lot of like people like comments and like people saying stuff or looking at you and like, I don't think we see it, it's more like Cushy and Sinead, no, yeah. that they see it as, oh, did you see what that guy said to you? No, because you just, just kind of switch all the time, aren't we? Yeah. Like, you, know, yeah. you built a shield too, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't really, like, why would you concern yourself with what, like, someone says about yeah. you? It's not really, that like, you don't know, you know, it's, like, Yeah, okay. they're not going to change your life. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. If you want to call me names or, or have a square go, I'm not going to even entertain that anymore, you know, yeah. it's, it's not part of, and again, yeah, being that little bit older, I kind of, I don't usually go out anywhere, I like to sit on the couch and have a cup of tea and yeah. watch bloody TV, that's me, I'm happy with that. The going out drinking life isn't for me. Until tonight, I'm going to get yeah. on it tonight. <laughs> Maybe slip on a couch like yours or whatever. Yeah, I can't you got, well, you guys must do everything together apart from the end of the night, little, little spoon together. <laughs> no, I just... You do everything to do it except from sleeping together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would draw a line at that. Yeah. Tom just kicks me out. He's, I always try. Like, I'm like, Tom, I'm scared. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> there wouldn't be a bed that fits you. So have you had any other occasions like that where it's everyday stuff? And it's like, whether it's playing chairs and stuff that are just awkward yeah. because 
they're not fit for uh, for purpose, I'd say. Doors, man. Doors. <laughs> like, for me, Get you know, every time. Like, but I always bang my head. Even <laughs> for like, even when I duck, I was, I was actually at soccer and I was, there was these, these are really small doors and I wasn't conscious. I went right into one and two of the footballs just started bursting out. I said, wow, in front of these guys as well. Can't remember who it was, but yeah, even when I duck, I still whack my head all the time. And it is all the time. Uh, it's so stupid. Like it's when you get out of, same when we're flying, so plane seats are a nightmare. Yeah. But then it's when you get out of the plane, Tom forgets, there's like a, a roof above him um, and he scones his head. Like he's oh. lucky, we're big, but he's lucky he's not tall because you know, he doesn't I'm get lucky I'm not as stupid as you. As you, <laughs> you don't have to duck all the time. So <laughs> if you know you have to duck, then duck. Like Sometimes I can be on my phone and just forget and just look straight into it. Oh, it's That's odd. the worst thing for me. Obviously the travelling's bad, but I, ducking down things, man, it's... All the time you, you do that, it's, it's or I honestly don't know how you can still speak the amount of brain cells you've lost. <laughs> honestly, it's, it's absolutely and it's and yeah, it's a nightmare. But yeah, things like that, and then clothes as well. Like yeah, clothes, clothes is yeah. Like see, try like see when you see someone wearing like a nice suit or a nice. You got a bit like, like, yeah. like oh, that'd be nice to when you go and try and buy one, then you think like, no chance. So uh, you must have to get everything tailored, must you? Yeah, yeah. So, which is shoes for me as well, obviously. Size 17 feet. 17. You can't just walk into a shop and go, yeah, give me one of them, please, you know? <laughs> That's why when Sinead goes out to shoe shopping, I hate every minute of it because nice shoes go up to size 12. Or sometimes for the joke, I go up to the guys and go, right, do you have this in size 17? They look at you like, <laughs> uh, uh. right, no. <laughs> just, uh, funny. Yeah, size 17 UK, so. Where, where do you, I mean, there, are they? These Nobles. Nine? Noble. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah, Sinead's actually really good at, She's, there's some night sites and stuff that she's got me some really nice shoes on obviously no bill as well but there seems to be now a lot of more accessible size 17 18 shoes uh, you know in uk america's one of the hardest places that i've found shoes wow. to get shoes big shoes you know and they've got the biggest guys in the world yeah you know? with basketball and stuff as well yeah i've walked into shops and they're like don't know what us 18s are like i was like geez oh man so yeah i'm <laughs> lucky now but yeah Going into day to day shots is, I hate every minute of it. Like, you know, it's just so jealous these guys can get, mm. some kid, some guys can get like those kid shoes as well that cost 20 quid, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying two, three hundred. Like Your sister's by like two years. Yeah, old. my oh. sister's got like size four feet. She's older than me, but she's just really petite. Oh. And she can get like boys junior, oh, kids junior, girls age 12. And I'm like, you spend a hundred quid and get like six pairs of shoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. Jeez, that'd be nice. Yeah, it's uh, like it. I don't you've never been able to do that. Probably when I was about one years old, two yeah. years old. Yeah. Push, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You're about six foot in your horse bladder. Jeez, oh, no. what, what's um what's next for you guys then in terms of like not just strongman but like is there any other like business yeah, opportunities yeah, that are like coming for you that you'd like to move into moving forward, whether it be like media or st- stuff like that? Yeah, I mean we've mm. been uh we just actually talked about a project that we're gonna be doing hopefully with uh can we say the names? Yeah, it? well, it's the Ram, 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 Gordon Ramsay and stuff. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so, so hopefully. Cool. Um, and then our documentary, fingers crossed, will be out at the end of the year on Netflix as well. And then Amazing. our second one as well is getting, still filmed. still getting filmed right now. And then the, a Hollywood, you tell it, Hollywood uh, films. Someone wants to play us from when we were kind of a child, so. <laughs> do, do, would we know who they are who are going to play yeah. No, I'll, I'll explain it. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 so basically a, a Hollywood or American movie company, um, so they're a big production company, they make movies, they invest and pay for movies to get made. So a writer got in touch with us whenever it was, a few months back, last year maybe, um, from New York, he's based in New York, he says, saw so some of your YouTube videos and stuff, really want to do a movie on you guys. So like, all right. Like thinking it was going to be like we hey, thought are we like kind of yeah, yeah YouTube are we YouTube or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but he came over from New York um, met really nice guy and basically want to do like a Hollywood style movie on our story so but it's going to be based like looking back like how we got there so it's like basically we're there at World Strongest Man final World Strongest Man but then it's like a look back to our a bit like child. the Venus and Serena film that's come out I haven't seen that yet. That's brilliant. really good. Is it really? Yeah. Will, King, Will Smith plays. King Richard. Oh yeah, yeah. Will Smith. King Richard. So it it looks at Venus and Serena from the age of ten. Right. Yes. Yes. Cool, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Very similar. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, so they're going to have like someone. So it's not going to be too focused on the actual training aspect. Mm. So or of Tom and I in present day, it's more like Younger. struggles with growing up in the Highlands, mm-hmm. what we've faced going through that, 
Um, so it'll be quite emotional because you're going to get like someone to play mum. Um, so that'll bring back memories and someone to play our sisters and family and dad and our friends and all this stuff. So it's going to be, it's going to be like a, based in, in our hometown, hometown in Invergordon. And almost like if you open a door in the house, in our home, you open it, but it leads to different places of our lives, if that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. Almost like an Alice in Wonderland, yeah. Slumdog Millionaire kind of take on it all. So um, so they were talking, so like, they've worked with, like, Halle Berry, Tom Hardy, like, you know. Get with Tom Who's Hardy playing involved. you two? Well, well you're going to be little, I'm just lucky anyway. it's not me at this stage. Peter Crouch, <laughs> Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch, yeah. He's the only guy close to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it'd be pretty so cool. Glad I'm a kid in it, no? But we, oh. we've got, I've actually, I haven't spoke to him for a couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to speak to the the guy writing it um, soon, and then yeah, a couple of well, documentaries. Thought, yeah. The documentary Some books as well. We've got an audio book I think coming mm. out, and yeah, the, the documentary. But the, the Mulligan brothers, yeah. they've been filming with us for almost three years. So, so this is before, like before we started speaking to psychologists. Our mindset was completely different. Um, before we won anything really, um, so it's all been pretty cool you know they've had that whole journey mm. um of, of where we've it's got cool to see it because we can't remember some things we filmed as well which will be cool to look yeah, at even well. in the business aspect yeah, especially well. even seen before like the mindset thing as well will be mm. cool to see you know so that's very interesting you know, we're trying to just grow the business and try and get mm. you know do some you know movies and stuff as well would be cool but yeah just trying to get out there and yeah. keep the, the business is a cool one because um, that's the one that can be like that longevity, you know. Mm. That's that's 100%. because we were speaking to the the, the, the Gordon Ramsay uh, production company, Ramsay Productions. So like that's what we're saying. It's not our end goal isn't to be on TV. Like it's it's a, a supplement or supports Don't the business. So yeah. so the business side is where we can have that real impact as well. So you can employ local people. Want to build this. Like this kind of full, uh, like everything under one roof. So the gym, studio, merchandise, offices, the shop, everything in like a big facility. You know that looks really cool in the Highlands. So mm. that's that's the one that gets me really excited. And I think 100%. all and of us, yeah, we're growing the sport as well. I mean, we've got like eight athletes that we've took on as well that we're doing merchandise for as well. And mm. even that's cool. You know, like Donna Moore's, yeah. Nova Coffs, everything. We're selling all their stuff. So it's good that we can. We're trying to help a lot of other people that you know yeah. don't really know how to do this stuff yeah. and you yeah. know help make some money as well because a lot of them aren't as lucky as us and you know it's nice to just support them and uh, yeah the business thing right now for me is so cool. It's so I wasn't at the start but now I'm seeing it and I'm you know I'm trying to get as just because it's starting to make money. Yeah. So yeah. Start, Tom's like ah oh, nah, stuff that. Yeah. I'm the money maker. Yeah. If, <laughs> if I wasn't for Tom, I'd Tom's, be the doll. Tom's and you, Andrew, take the fuck yeah. out of my world. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a private jet and a McDonald's in the private jet. And a Bugatti, mate. That's all you need, uh, isn't it? Look at my fucking Bugatti. You can <laughs> fucking fit in one. <laughs> Andrew Tate, he's funny. I watch a lot of Andrew. He's, uh, he's a funny guy. He's just wild. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of stuff, man. It's cool. You know, it's exciting times, basically, isn't it? Yeah. It's just, yeah, just just being proactive and again being consistent in what we're doing. That's all it is. It I mean, is. even last week we got a chance to do some stuff with the Commonwealth Games and try different sports. So we tried judo, gymnastics, diving. Really? So it was gymnastics. very, very exciting. How is gymnastics? Yeah. Oh, one of the hardest things ever. <laughs> and even cricket, there was there were only fifteen year old girls, no mercy, and I got hit right in my quad and got <laughs> swelled up. And I really? told her to, she's lucky. Oh, she, I, I it was like, <laughs> have you seen Mean Girls? Have you seen yeah. that? That's what they were like. It was like really? she just walked in with a swag, and I'm like, oh, these. Oh, oh, I'm oh, terrified. What a <laughs> swagger they had See, for fifteen year old <laughs> girls. They came they in. They were bowling like sixty. They were like spinning it up in the air and catch it and. Like, oh, 60 miles per hour and you're like <laughs> so scary don't man. hit me have you ever been in a, like, a cricket bat, bat in cage thing no yeah, I I never, have, yeah, I'm yeah. terrified never would oh it's my scary. god but you don't really appreciate it until you actually do it as well because you know when you watch that on TV you're like, that's you realise how quick it is even, yeah. Yeah. even judo as well like I walked on that and said these guys are tiny and oh my days man <laughs> throwing oh, I was getting sure. battered oh, about by the girls as well there was a girl yeah. that was I was just like, this is this is crazy. This is unbelievable how these guys are doing this to me. The coach, he was like an old school guy from Birmingham, sixty year old lad, and when he came in, he just demanded. He just had that respect from yeah, all his yeah, students. You see like, oh shit, this is going to be serious. So he did like twenty minutes of off. punishing us. We, we were missed, we missed the turn. Five, ten press ups, ten press ups. I'm like, 
Oh, jump scares. It's actually scary, but it's good having. We're looking, oh. we're looking at like the producers, like, like that guy's. <laughs> <laughs> guy, like, they were all fine. We, our suits were like dripping with sweat, <laughs> sees through. You're like, oh my days. And then man. he started throwing us around. Uh, yeah. He managed, like, he was like, and then he was like lying on top of us. He's like, right, try and get me off yet. And we couldn't budge him because he just knew technique and complete control, like, of his body. And it was insane. It was, it was an unbelievable experience. It, it was so it was cool. So good yeah, experience. like, so fortunate to do yeah. that. And uh, hopefully you get to go down and watch the guys. And the, the England women's hockey team, so they were out in Tokyo and they'd won like bronze medals. So they're like Olympic winning uh, medalist. It was so cool to see them. They were they were awesome, the, the hockey girls. Diving was an experience. Oh, well. I was like, oh, were you doing it off the springboards or like three the platform? Flat yeah. platform, yeah. And obviously gravity is a lot more of a point. I asked you to do it. Bomb off it after, and oh my days. Tom did a bomb off the three meters. Oh, it hurt. Oh, I, I, worst, I was the worst pain of my life. <laughs> but his, his ass like hit the water <laughs> first. Oh. It was awful. It and budgie smugglers on as well. Oh, so like, oh, oh skin. yeah. No, oh. that's not the one. Just, but yeah, it was, that, that's it was, so, it was cool, so good just to do stuff like that, you know, and yeah. getting to do other mm. sports. And like I said, we never appreciated what cricket, you know, was like yeah. in judo. And then you do that, and you're like, geez, it's hard work, you know, yeah. and it's, it's unbelievable seeing what they can do. You know? So hard. We were so it was so tiring. Like they were like, just laughing at us. Was like, oh, <laughs> like the rhythmic gymnastics. Oh, it's like, hilarious. One the of girl them. Mimi, I think her name was. Yeah, Mimi. Yeah. She was so graceful, like so <laughs> elegant. So she like, did a routine, and we had to do a routine afterwards, and it was poor. Oh, it's awful. It's, Can we watch this anywhere? Is this available on your YouTube? Uh, no, I think the so it's for the Birmingham. Commonwealth yeah, Games. So, it's going to be so they're going to oh. be publishing it on. So I think it's going to be an ad before before that. it starts. Ah, okay. It's going to see us doing all this stuff. So. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. just embarrass yourself. So. Oh my course. god, I can't wait to watch that. Yeah. Hyp hypothetically, do you know what I'd like to say? So if, for example, ITV came knocking 2023, mm. and you get the, the sign off from the missus, Love Island 2023. <laughs> The Stoltman brothers are going oh, into Love Island Villa miss. in Casa Amor ready for kickoff. Never. Imagine that, how entertaining that'll be though. I just could The thing is, I, I'd do it because I'd go in fat, you know, and not yeah. in, in your budgies. Yeah, in my case, I'd be <laughs> like, look at you, Zoe model. Boy. I'd be that angry guy, like, say, shut up, guys. It's nine o'clock. I'm not food on the I'm not going to bed. I'm hungry, uh, leave me alone. Snow and everything. <laughs> I honestly don't know how those guys can do that. Like, I just not, nah. Have I'm, you, have you, do you watch it? Yeah, I haven't watched it this season, yeah. uh, but every other season. Um, I loved it, man. It was uh, it was cool. When I get to meet the Love Island people, I was hanging out with you know Wes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he's he's cool a yeah. Guy, yeah. So like at soccer aid, me and him were drinking and, and stuff together. So that was quite cool, just chilling with him. He's a good fucker, man. Yeah. So funny. I was like, oh, Wes from Love Island, what are you doing, mate? Oh, it's class. Um, but yeah, I, I just couldn't. Uh, maybe when I was younger, but yeah. not, I don't have the patience. I don't think that. I say every year, I'm not going to watch it. And she has about two episodes on them oh, glued. So, yeah, you watch you it. It's easy to get yes. glued to. It's like Big Brother and that as yeah. well. And everything like that. Yeah, it's easy you don't really like. You're not you that wanna, bothered about, it, but you get you FOMO. Just it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just it's just like, miss oh, me. I want to watch everything. Oh, I, I get right into it and follow them on Instagram and like, yeah. oh, are they still together? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, still together? Well, you, you could go them a year later. Ah, oh, was a waste. Oh, yeah, that's him. That's Someone always. from uh, the Highlands was on it. Wallace, Wallace Wilson. Yeah, so he was on it from up where we live. He was on it. No way. He was on two years, few years ago. He was with uh, the Newcastle girl with the dark hair. She came in. I feel like I would remember because I really did watch them all, but. Uh, he's a good guy. He's got his own PT business and yeah. podcast and stuff. So he's done really good for them. Yeah, we, we did a, a YouTube video with him. Um, it was so stupid. We pretended to baptize yeah, him. baptized him in the water. <laughs> Loch Ness. He said like, he do it with everyone he, and he dropped Did like, he think he was actually getting baptized? I think he thought that something was going on. He didn't really know. Um, we but we pretended that we'd picked up a, one of her friends from prison, um, so so stupid. so stupid. I felt so bad for him. So we didn't tell him. I said, "Sorry, mate. This is big Lewis. We just picked him up from jail. He's been in, inside for a few months." So Lewis had this like suit, trousers on, no shoes on, a shirt, and like his glasses, and he's just like rocking back and forth. And you know Alan from The Hangover? Yeah. yeah. Like, when he had the bald head and yeah. the beard. So he looked like him. <laughs> um, so then we were like, I need to go and baptise him in Loch Ness. So I'm baptising him. I said, right, Wallace, come on, you're up. He said, what? I said, come on out, I'll baptise you, I'll be gentle. Such a, oh, <laughs> so stupid. It's yeah. just all the fun stuff though, isn't yeah, it? You can't, bad. some stuff like that is just so much fun. Priceless. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's, been, it's, uh, it's funny to know stupid <laughs> stuff, isn't it?
You love it. 100%, yeah. <laughs> I mean, YouTube in itself is funny, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we can take our personalities out and don't have to be fake, and that's the best exactly. thing about it. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And that's the best thing. You can be real with it, but again, like to you two, thanks for coming on to the, the show today and being mm -hmm. real and sharing your experience. And honestly, I think what you guys are doing, not just for Strongman, but for the sport, is like is amazing. The, the message that you're both spreading for mental health and bringing other people into the sport who potentially wouldn't have, have watched it before, I think is is great and um, I, I really can't wait to see what is next for you guys and we'll be following along Thank intensely. You, Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us on. It's been yeah. awesome. We really it's enjoyed cool. it. Thank Thank you. Good, eh? Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube to leave any questions below or to any comments to the YouTube video and if you're watching it on is it Spotify or on that? Yeah, well? Spotify you can watch on video as well now which is really cool. And then make sure to tag me, Lucy, Tom or Luke uh, if you share anything on Instagram as well. Tom or, Tom or Luke or Tom and Luke. Both, <laughs> Both of them. Both, uh, <laughs> tag which one? Yeah, yeah. Tag, tag Tom, which one? Tom would reply to you. too big time. <laughs> <laughs> I reply to everyone. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. You guys. Bye. Cheers, cheers. Bye.